two, three. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk About It Tuesday with This Is Improv. My name is Angelica, and today we have the marvelous, the beautiful Juliet Lynn. Welcome, Juliet. Hello. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Happy to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, well, Juliet is uh, an expert, a wonderful actress. And can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, definitely. So as Angelica said, I am an actor. I just started acting recently, but I booked the lead in a play that's premiering at Hollywood Fringe Festival. So I guess I have some fun things to share about that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, my background is I went to USC. I studied in the business and cinematic arts program. Oh, wow. thought I was yeah thought I was gonna go into the entertainment industry like producing or managing or marketing or something like that and then I did some internships in entertainment and was like hmm maybe not right now <laughs> um and maybe it's not so friendly to Asians at this moment um okay. so when I graduated yeah I um I just worked at a startup doing like sales marketing operations that sort of thing um, but I feel like in the back of my mind, I always knew like, oh, I always wanted to do something more creative. Like growing up, my sister and I were always just doing like a bunch of different like arts and crafts and I did video production in high school. So I was like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I, I just kind of gave up on the creativity a bit too soon. So I saved up a ton of money, uh, quit my job and decided to just like explore my creativity. I had no idea what I wanted to do, but mm -hmm. I... I had a YouTube channel. I was making videos. I recently just privated all of them. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen this. Um, yes. Um, but yeah, I had a, I had a podcast. I have another podcast now. Um, I was doing storytelling, improv, stand up. Um, I did like a songwriting class. So I basically just explored like a ton of different creative options. And then I took an acting class and I was like, huh. Wow, I love acting. And I think the through line with everything I've been doing, oh, I was also writing like um, a novel, like I was writing a nonfiction novel and a fiction one. So I think the You've through been line- been all over the place. I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know, I've just done everything, but I think the through line with everything that I've been doing is storytelling mm -hmm. and um, wanting to connect with people on that deeper emotional level. So I think, I, I think when I started acting, I was like, wow, this is like the perfect medium to kind of do all the different things that I want to do. So yeah, that's kind of how I got here. <laughs> and the podcast, I've actually had the chance to listen to the podcast. Do you want to talk about it a little bit? Sure. Okay. So I have two podcasts. Um, <laughs> so the, the first one I started right when I quit my job and it's called The Remarkable Leap. And the idea with that was to interview people who have taken leaps of faith, either, you know, going from one career, shifting into another, or just doing something super out of their comfort zone. So I got the chance to interview um, Jason Wiley, who's the founder of Jubilee Media. Um, he used to work in management consulting and then quit to start this nonprofit like video company. And now they're like, I think they have like 6 million subscribers. They make so much content. They're so inspiring. But we've interviewed a lot of really awesome people. And I think for me, I really wanted to explore that topic because before I quit my job, that was like the first thing in my life that I actually really like took a leap of faith and okay. did something like in a sense that like I didn't know what would happen once I quit my job. It's like right. I didn't have another job lined up. I wasn't sure if like YouTube was going to take off. I just I didn't really have a plan, but it was just like I just trusted <laughs> that if I took this step that I would kind of figure it out along the way, but I was really scared and I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe this is the worst idea I've ever had in my whole <laughs> life. Maybe everything will crumble. Maybe I will just never recover from this one decision that I made in my life, um, which I guess is, is very related to improv actually. Um, so yeah, I feel like it was just really comforting to be able to talk to other people, to hear their life lessons, especially people that were like maybe five, 10, 20 years out from that leap of faith or that have taken multiple leaps because it's like, yeah, you don't necessarily know the next day or the next week or the next month how things are going to turn out. But over time, you'll have realized that like it was always worth it to take that leap. I mean, 
of course, considering that you're like safe and you have the financial means necessary and all, all of that baseline stuff. But beyond that, it's like any risks that you take in life are inherently not going to have a set like a uh, definitive answer or right. what's going to happen but you just kind of have to do it and find out and then if it was the wrong move then you just do something else and i think if i'm trying to like relate this back to improv um it's just like yes you'll whenever you're in a scene or something you kind of just throw things out and then it'll work and yeah. people will add on to it like in most cases you'll start something and even if it's not the perfect idea people will build on it and make it better in the most extreme scenarios it just doesn't work it falls flat and then mm -hmm. who cares like you got an yeah. awkward moment awkward moment of silence and then you start a blackout over. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you just someone runs across the stage and you start a new scene and it's fine and it's like that moment is over and i actually mm -hmm. do think that um adopting a lot of philosophies from improv really helped me to kind of um, see my life in a different way. Um, because I actually took, like my first improv class I took was in 2018. And I had no intention of being a performer or anything. It was just something that people have been telling me about, like it's a good way to get out of your comfort zone. And I think I really adopted that whole like yes and mentality where it's like, when you take a step forward courageously, like other people will want to support you and lift mm -hmm. you up. <laughs> yeah, we have each other's backs and that's that's awesome yeah that's what we need in the world we need to have each other's backs totally. and it's so cool that you've had experience in all almost all aspects of entertainment production uh having the background uh going to school for it and then starting your own youtube channel which has disappeared now we don't know where it is we wish we knew where it was so we could look at it but hey uh but we have two wonderful podcasts that are out now um and going back what what do you think started at all what what do you think was the the pinnacle moment that let you know like i want to be this is my life i want to take the leap into the arts i want this to be the what i focus on for for the rest of my life or foreseeable future yeah that's a good question i it wasn't one moment i think it was a series of moments that i kept rejecting like it would just be like knocks at my door being like oh that's Hello, are you ready yeah. open the door and then i would be like maybe but i don't know no thank you come back <laughs> later or never um but basically i think like i said i started being interested in media through youtube because as an asian american there was growing up there wasn't that representation on like tv or in like mainstream media um but youtube especially in like i think like 2006 or like early 2010s is when a lot of asian american content creators started coming up like wong fu productions kathy nguyen community channel like happy slip like a bunch of these asian american creators were popping up and i was like wow there are people that look like me being creative and making content and telling stories and I just thought that was really fascinating. And I, <laughs> in eighth grade, I think is when I posted my first YouTube videos. I, it was like <clears throat> me singing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Those Whoa. videos are gone. Content gone. <laughs> gone. Yeah. So I like made a bunch of singing videos. Not a bunch. Um, they don't exist. Don't look for them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah i did that and then i did a bunch of like stop motiony things like i was really into oh, wow. origami so i remember i made this like like i made these origami turtles and they were like moving around and it was like i don't know it was just like a fun creative thing and actually like a bunch of people like i wasn't cool in middle school but pe but people didn't bully me you know okay. and actually like i was like really insecure about this youtube channel but this i remember this one girl like found it and she's like juliet that's so cool like that's so awesome and i feel like people were nice about it but i think that i was just like i could never do this like it's it's never gonna work so i kind of stopped but i still took video production throughout high school like when i got to high school and i entered like random video competitions like i remember the la county public library they had like a competition to like make a video and i submitted yeah. and like i won and then i won this like <laughs> this, I know this competition people. winning youtube channel oh my gosh no. silly silly <laughs> and then i um i was like obsessed with this guy on america's got talent his name is taylor matthews 
and he did a competition for like a music video like a song that he had and he wanted his fans to create a music video for it so i did like a stop motion animation with like two little characters like running around the garden and all the stuff and i ended up winning and i got like a video chat with him which <laughs> anyway super random um but yeah there were like these things <laughs> <leading up> to... <laughs> yeah um but it was like I was doing all these video production projects um, and I was doing it in, in class um, and I actually started like a film club and I was teaching other people how to make videos and stuff like that. And I think like by my senior year when I was like, what do I apply to for college? I was like, I can't just be a creative. Like I'm not, I think I just told myself I wasn't talented enough creatively or like I didn't really have a vision or a voice or anything to say. But I was like, oh, well, I was like the president of this film club and I taught other people how to make films and I ran this film festival. Like maybe my role could be like more on the business side. Like I could connect creatives together and I could build that community. But like, I'm not, I'm not going to be the creative, you know, that was kind of my mentality. And I think I kind of internalized this idea that like I wasn't allowed to be creative professionally or pursue that as a career, even though my parents never said that. But I think just growing up Asian American and kind of having like a lot of implicit standards that I kind of adopted that maybe didn't really exist. But I was like, I have to get a respectable job and like have a respectable major. Like I'll study business. I mean, I was like a good student in school. like. Mm -hmm. Um, had good grades and all that stuff and I was like I'm good at math sure why not um, and then so yeah I was deciding between this might be just like too much information uh, but yeah. I was yeah I was deciding between NYU and USC and NYU was like Stern School of Business it's like a top 10 business school in the US but it's like so competitive and mm -hmm. it's just so like business heavy and I was like I don't know that I could do that with my life but at USC it was like um, also a business major but my mom actually she found this like specialized degree program that was like within the school of business but it was like a joint degree program with the school of cinematic arts so she was mm -hmm. like oh you can learn about the business side of the industry like producing marketing managing like all these different things like pitching to networks and stuff like that and I was like oh that's really cool because it was kind of a way to tie in my creative interests but mm -hmm. still have it be like anchored to something that was like secure and like realistic mm -hmm like with business you know so I ended up doing that and I was like well and my parents like my mom was always like yeah you can work in the entertainment industry it's cool like they were never the type of parents that were like you have to be a doctor you have to be an engineer like you have to do all of this stuff but for some That's reason crazy. I just told myself like I still have to be successful and make a lot of money and whatever I can't be creative in college I was like in this business and cinematic arts program there was actually like a midway point where I kind of decided I didn't like the entertainment industry and it wasn't a fit for me and I was like considering so this is kind of this is kind of like one of those knock at the door moments where okay. I was like I really don't like this business and cinematic arts program like I don't like the entertainment industry maybe I should take a year off because I just have no clue what I want to do and my mom was like oh over the summer why don't you take some classes at a community college see if you like them before you just like completely switch majors which uh -huh. was a smart idea yeah, um, definitely. Go yeah, mom. So I, yeah i know thanks mom um so i took classes i took like a real estate class just because my parents do real estate and they're like eh, you could do real estate um and then i took a class at, I, I took an anthropology class and i think i took like another sociology class or something like that and at the end of the summer i was like i really enjoyed that those like sociology anthropology classes uh but i was like can i switch majors and like the biggest fear in my head was like but i'm not going to graduate in four years and then i'm not going to be a successful person or like i'm going to look like an idiot because i didn't graduate in four years which is so silly mm -hmm. and i was also like i mean this was just so like narrow-minded but i literally googled like business major salary social science study yes. salary <laughs> and it was like I think every college student does that and yeah. then is unpleasantly surprised and also yeah you know, but it's like you, what yeah and it's like you think the world is so binary and it's yeah. just like you do this and it'll lead to this or you do this and it'll lead to this and it's like it's not like that there are so many different options and it's like i didn't but i was just scared you know and i couldn't fathom like letting mm -hmm. go of something that i had like sort of built my life around or taking a risk 
into like, you know, doing sociology, like what if that doesn't work out? And then I have to graduate in, in like five years or six years and I switch majors again. I was like, let me just stick to something stable, what I know, I'll just suffer through it for like another two years and I'll at least have a degree and I know what the path is. Uh-huh. And then when I graduated, I got my job and I was like, okay, it's still gonna be in the business world. Like I'm still gonna make decent money, but it's not gonna be like everyone else was like at a consulting firm or doing finance or investment banking or something like that. I was like, I'm still gonna be in the business world, but it's gonna be a little bit creative. So I was working at like a startup that was a membership organization that uh, did events for like entrepreneurs and creatives. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool, but I feel like there was always still this nagging thing where it was like, but you still want to be more creative. And probably like a year into that job or less, um, I was like, I really want to quit and like do something else. And it took me like two and a half years to finally like work up the courage to quit that job. And even in like the final months when I was thinking about quitting, I was like, I don't know. I don't think it's the right choice. Like, it's so silly and I think like my parents um, like my parents have always been like you know we trust you to do what you want with your life but even still my dad was like well Juliet like the best time to get a new job is when you're in your current job like don't you think you should have another job lined up before you quit and I was mm-hmm. like yeah that would make sense if I knew like at all what I wanted to do what with the next life. step was yeah and I, I did I applied to a ton of jobs I got a couple of offers for different things but I was just like if I switch into something right away just to have that stability it might just like I'm just going to be locked into another thing that I'm not like necessarily sure about mm-hmm. um, and I might just get stuck for more time I was like like I think long term it makes more sense to just quit take time to explore have that be like an incubation period and then find a new trajectory to go when I'm like more confident about it. Yeah. So yeah, I finally quit my job and I, there was a huge adjustment period. I think just being like constantly being like, was that the right choice? Was that the right choice? I was so silly. I shouldn't have done that. Like maybe I should go back. Um, but at some point I just accepted it. And this, (laughs) well, the timeline is like December, 2019 quit my job. March 2020, pandemic starts, so oh. like everyone's just at yeah. home. It's like a whole new adjustment period. Um, but yeah, I had started my podcast then. I was like working on my book um, and like dabbling in some other stuff. I like wrote a song with some friends. Um, <laughs> and then the August of 2020, um, I <laughs> randomly got diagnosed with cancer and then that was just like a whole whirlwind like I started my treatment like a few days after I got diagnosed and then I was just like in and out of the hospital doing chemotherapy and surgeries through like December of 2020 um and then I I was like done with all my treatments um and I'm in remission now which is great but I think congratulations thank you I think during that time period I was really hard on myself like even when I wasn't like I literally couldn't lift up a spoon I couldn't walk anywhere on my own like my mom had to take me to the bathroom I couldn't do anything and yet I was still sitting in bed being like I need to be productive like I need to do something with my life and I feel like that yeah that's like had been ingrained in me my whole life and I think I just had to come to a realization of like I'm like literally sick with cancer (laughs) and I'm still so hard on myself yeah so I think I just realized at that point if I don't like change the way that I'm thinking right now like it's never going to change because this is like the most extreme situation and I'm still being mean to myself so clearly there is something like that I need to work on and so I think with that I was kind of just like like life is not just all about being productive and like making money and like contributing to society or whatever, like in that very like capitalistic mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of had to let go of that. But yeah, after I finished my treatments, I was kind of just like slowly getting back into the world. And I was like, you know what, like, I had originally quit my job to do more creative things. And I was doing things on my own. But I wasn't like actively taking classes because I was just scared of not Mm -hmm. being good. And I remember distinctly, like, right after I finished my treatments, I was like, I'm going to be a new person. Like, you know how they they say, it, uh, like, yeah. on TV, it's like, you go through, like, a tragedy, and then suddenly you just become a different person. and Whole new you're... life. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're just, like, brave, and you just have this new perspective. And I was literally sitting on my computer, had this storytelling class at UCB queued up, and I was like, I want to sign up. I, like, I physically cannot, like... 
I want to enter the credit card information, uh-huh. but like, I can't, like I'm so scared. And I was like, oh. I was like, this cancer did nothing for me. My perspective <laughs> is not any different. Work for um, me. I know. I was like, if anything, you cut, you cut it down a little bit of something. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I think I like I had to text several of my friends and be like, I really want to take this storytelling class. Like, I think it'll be so much fun. I'm just worried if I'm not going to be any good. I'm going to look like an idiot. And my friends were like, Juliet, it's an intro class. The point is for you to learn. You're not supposed to be like a professional, like after your first class, like you're going to write a story. And then if it's not any good, your teacher will help you and it'll get better. And by the end of the class, you will have learned something. And I was like, oh, yes, that is correct. So after like a lot of pushing, like I finally signed up for the class. Um, and it was such, it was a really great experience and it was so much fun and I really love storytelling. Um, but I think like after, after that, I was like, oh, I really want to take songwriting. And I was like, I know I was super scared last time because I was like, what if I'm not any good? But I was like, oh, don't, like I, I think my mind sh- shifted to just like, oh, I'm going to learn something new and it'll be fun and I'll decide if I like it or not. Um, so I was like, I didn't even need any prompting for my friends. I just like paid for the class and signed up. Um, so I, I think that like, yeah, I kind of like expected the whole cancer to situation to like shift my perspective immediately. Mm-hmm. But it, it's more so that like it kind of made me start to question things and push myself a little bit more. And I think it was mostly just that like once you experience taking a risk on something and then not dying afterwards, <laughs> then you're like, okay, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that's why I was able to like start taking more improv classes and like start doing stand-up um, on Clubhouse. With, um, yes, and, and to start taking acting That's classes. That's pretty amazing, too. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, that was very long-winded. <laughs> it, it, it's great to because every, every aspect of your story definitely plays a part. Like, it's a huge milestone leading up to your artistic journey, which is really incredible. Uh, and seeing all the transformations and the knocks at the door and literally every time you, it's so funny that your podcast is Leap of Faith because you, you are, you're constantly taking that leap of faith. And, um, something that I notice is, you know, like after a traumatic event, like you want to change your life. And so many times it's still difficult. It takes that, you know, your own willpower. So you're even stronger because you're, (laughs) this is all you, it's definitely you, uh, that's taking that, that leap of faith into what could be failure and you're doing great based off of what I've seen. (laughs) Appreciate it. Yeah, I wasn't very clear on it, but yeah, I think the second knock, like the second big knock on the door was when I was like, should I quit my job? And it took me a long time to say yes, but I like really reflected on this fact that like I did, I that knock came when I was in college and I didn't open that door. And I like don't think I realized how much it affected me. Like I don't want to use the word depressed like lightly but I do think it like weighed down on me this feeling that like oh I don't have any control over my life I just have to do exactly the path that's set out for me or what I think is the right thing to do and I think when I finally freed myself from that idea that's when I was able to finally just like be more open to taking risks and to different possibilities now that now you're that you're out, you're you're free in your <laughs> real life, what you're supposed to be. Um, what has been one of your favorite memories? What's been one of your favorite moments in in this new world of yours? Mm, I think it's what's been exciting and I think affirming is that see, so yeah, I only started acting recently. And almost like immediately when I started, like I got my headshots together, I got my acting profiles together and I started submitting. And like a couple days later, I got a callback for a play. And then like the next day I like booked the role and I was like, I've been applying this stuff for like less than a week. And I book like the lead in this play that I'm currently in right now. And I think and, that- And was, what's the play called? It's called Vice. Um, it's a sci-fi play that is premiering at the Hollywood Fringe Festival. So- yeah, it's been a lot of fun, but I think that um, it was just a positive affirmation from the universe that like, yes, you're on the right path, and if you keep putting yourself out there, good things will come. And like one of my good acting friends, he told me like, Juliet, like I don't even know that many pe- people that would like just start acting and then just decide to like apply to be like a lead in like a play. And I was like, oh, what? 
I was like, oh, that thought hadn't even occurred to me. And I feel like past me, like I would never have done that. Past me would have been like, well, here are like the tiny little steps I can take. Like maybe I could start doing background work first just to like have experience on set and then work my way up to like a one liner and then maybe like a supporting role and then eventually work up to like a leading role. But with like my mindset, like it didn't even cross my mind. I was just like any role that I feel like I'm a fit for, like essence wise or like personality wise like I'm gonna apply so yeah it wasn't like a specific memory I guess but I think it was just the realization that like I've kind of changed and shifted how I think about things and kind of how I approach the world and how much more like forthcoming I am about things and that's pretty cool um to the way that you shifted your mindset uh because yeah you instead of holding yourself back so many of us hold ourselves back because we're like we have to take these steps and you're just like i i qualify for this let me apply for this and look at where you are so that's huge yeah it's still nerve-wracking and oftentimes i'm like why did i do this to myself <laughs> maybe i'm unprepared but i think um there's this idea i forget i've heard it from several people but it's like there's a difference between being uncomfortable and unsafe and it's like oftentimes we prevent ourselves from doing things that are uncomfortable because we don't like it, obviously. But, and we think that we will be unsafe. But truly, in most situations that are uncomfortable, you'll still be safe. Like your life is not at risk. Like it, you're not gonna be really harmed in any way besides like feeling embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think once I was able to kind of delineate between those two things and be like, okay, yes, I am feeling super uncomfortable, but I'm not unsafe, so it's still okay. And like, I'm still gonna learn and grow if I put myself in those uncomfortable situations. That's, that's pretty incredible. Uh, we, we've gotten so many tidbits from you, so much good advice. What, what would you say? Do you have a piece of advice, something that you go into new situations doing, uh, an exercise that you do that you think might help other people? Honestly, I really just think that like taking an improv class will just change your life because I really think the impetus for a lot of this was just that improv class I took in 2018 and again, it wasn't with any intention to be a performer or do anything, but I think like physically putting yourself out there and getting the actual like the feedback loop of like you're still safe, people will support you and all that stuff, it kind of builds that in your mind and, and kind of helps to shift your perspective. So I definitely say keep taking improv classes. Um, and then for me, one of the things that really helped me is this book called The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. It's like a 12 week um, guided course. You read a chapter a week and it's like on a different theme and there are like different tasks that you do. And it's really to help you to unblock yourself creatively and sort of access your inner child and access that like ability to play. Um, and I've done it like four or five times now and I feel like every time I just learn something new and I, I kind of just expand. So yeah, The Artist's Way is definitely my number one. Right. Cool. Improv, Artist's Way, combined, you, Juliet. Yes, awesome. exactly. <laughs> and do you have anything coming up? Anything that, uh, any projects that you're working on now? You have the play that yes. you're in right now. Uh, and do you have anything else? Yeah, so the play is the main thing that I'm working on. We're doing in-person and live streaming shows. So if you're in LA, you can come to the show. Um, and then if not, we're also doing um, live streaming. And it's cool because it's a play that's focused a lot around technology. So we actually have a lot of immersive elements like handheld and like body cameras, like surveillance cameras, different angles to make it more immersive. So Very cool. yeah, it's a fun time. We have a we have a very special question. It, it it's a it, it's a hard question. So take your time if you need it, Juliet. Yes. If you could build the ideal taco, what would it be? Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I know it's intense. It's the most intense question you'll probably be asked all your life. But we ask the hard questions here. It will have to be from like a legitimate taco truck. Okay. Um, like the little tortillas, not the big ones that people stuff a bunch of stuff. Like it's gotta be an authentic, I'm from Southern California. So like authentic, okay. 
Mexican tacos are, are oh, okay. Like, you know, so they're like the small little <laughs> tortillas. Um, and like, I'm thinking maybe al pastor. Like if you've ever gotten it from one of those trucks that has the al pastor and they like shave it off and it's, it's oh. so good. So yeah, al pastor. I, I, I forgot that I'm talking to you an expert. Uh, <laughs> Florida, we don't have those oh things. Oh my gosh. Um, it's, he, it's, yeah, what else? Yes. What else? Um, what, and what then else is significant? Like a slice, a, of pine, a slice of pineapple with al pastor Ooh. is really good. Honestly, that's pretty much all you need. But <laughs> you could add, okay, like sometimes I will add grilled onions. Uh-huh. Um, and, oh, wait, okay. Mm-hmm. I always need lime, lime juice. Ooh. But honestly, that's pretty much all you need. It's a great taco. Wow. The secret sauce is lime juice. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for answering that awesome question. <laughs> there was I so know it's really hard. The question, but that was an important question. Super important. And I learned a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be trying the lime juice on my next taco. Definitely. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thanks for the advice. Uh, well, that's, that wraps up our Talk About It Tuesday. Juliet, where can we find you? Where can we find your glorious work, your your face, your presence? Where can we find you? Right now, you can find me on Instagram. It's at Juliet T. Lynn. And yeah, I post all my stuff there. You can get, uh, there's like a link to the Hollywood Fringe tickets. And yeah. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, If you have the time, check it out, no matter where you are, because you can stream it from anywhere. And make sure to follow Juliet. Thank you, Juliet, so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching another episode of Talk About It Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining. While you're here, make sure to subscribe and hit the like button so you get to see videos like this more often and awesome stories like Juliet's every week. Uh, Thank you so much. Have a great Tuesday. Goodbye, everyone.